Hello again, welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about section 2.8. This one's going to be all about function operations and composition. Composition is a really important idea in pre-calculus and calculus, so if you're planning on going on in that direction, I hope that you'll really make sure that you get a good understanding of composition here. In this section, we'll talk about arithmetic operations on functions. That's adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. We'll talk about something called the difference quotient, and we'll also look at composition of functions and the domain of a composed function. Now first we want to talk about operations on functions. What does it mean to do an operation on a function? Well we know operations are add, subtract, multiply, and divide, but what does it mean to add two functions together or subtract two functions? That's what we're going to define here. It says given two functions f and g, then for all values of x for which f of x and g of x are defined, the functions f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g are defined as follows. f plus g of x is just f of x plus g of x. So that works really nicely, and in fact, that's the way all the operations work. f minus g of x is just f of x minus g of x. f times g is just f of x times g of x and f divided by g of x is just f of x divided by g of x, but with the understanding that we cannot allow x to be anything that would cause the denominator to equal zero. So any number that causes the denominator to equal zero has to be left out of the domain. Now let's talk a little bit more about domain for all the operations. The domains of f plus g, f minus g, and f times g include all real numbers that are in the intersection of the domains for f and g. So in other words, any number that's in the domain of both individual functions can be in the domain of the sum or the difference or the product of those two functions. Now as you might imagine, it's a little bit different for f divided by g. The domain of f divided by g includes those real numbers in the intersection of the domains of f and g for which g of x is not equal to zero. So similar to f plus g, f minus g, and f times g, we still are talking about the intersection of the two individual domains. However, we have to make sure and leave out any x values that would cause the bottom function to equal zero because those x values are going to cause our quotient function to be undefined. Now here's just a little note of caution. The condition g of x is not equal to zero in the definition of the quotient means that the domain of f over g cannot contain any numbers for which g of x equals zero. It doesn't mean that g of x can never equal zero. It means that any numbers that cause g to equal zero have to be excluded from the domain. Now here's an example for us. This one says, let f of x equal x squared plus 1, and let g of x equal 3x plus 5, and we want to find each of the following. First, let's find f plus g of 1. Well, we know from our definition of sum that f plus g of 1 is just f of 1 plus g of 1. So let's evaluate each of these separately, and then we can add them together f of 1 is going to be 1 squared plus 1, so that's going to be 1 plus 1, which is 2. g of 1 is going to be 3 times 1 plus 5, which is going to be 3 plus 5, which is 8. And if we add together f of 1 plus g of 1, we get 2 plus 8, which is 10. So f plus g of 1 is 10. And now let's look at f minus g of negative 3. Well, we know from our definition of subtraction that f minus g of negative 3 is going to be equal to f of negative 3 minus g of negative 3. So let's evaluate each of these separately. f of negative 3 is going to be negative 3 squared plus 1, which is going to be 9 plus 1, which is 10 and g of negative 3 is going to be 3 times negative 3 plus 5. That's going to be negative 9 plus 5, which is negative 4. Now, 
f of negative 3 minus g of negative 3 is going to be 10 minus negative 4, which is the same as 10 plus 4, which is 14. Continuing with example 1, let's find f times g of 5. So from our definition of multiplication, f times g of 5 is equal to f of 5 times g of 5. So we'll evaluate these separately. f of 5 will be 5 squared plus 1, which is 26. g of 5 will be 3 times 5 plus 1, which is 15 plus 1, which is 16. So f times g of 5 will be f of 5 times g of 5, which is 26 times 16, which my calculator tells me is 416. Now let's look at f divided by g of 0. Our definition of division tells us that f divided by g of 0 is equal to f of 0 divided by g of 0, provided g of 0 does not equal 0. So let's evaluate each of these separately. f of 0 is 0 squared plus 1, which is 1. g of 0 is 3 times 0 plus 5, which is 5. So f of 0 over g of 0 is just 1 over 5, so 1 fifth. Here's example 2. This says let f of x equal 8x minus 9 and g of x equal square root of 2x minus 1. Find each function and give its domain. Now we know how to find the sum or difference or product or quotient, but you may be a little worried about the domain. The domain for a sum and a difference and a product is just the intersection of the two individual domains. That's really nothing to worry about because once we get the two functions added or subtracted or multiplied, you'll be able to look at the combination function and determine what the domain should be. The only time we really have to be careful is on f divided by g, which we'll see in just a minute. So let's look at f plus g of x. f plus g of x is going to be equal to f of x plus g of x, which in this case is going to be 8x minus 9 plus square root of 2x minus 1. Now, if both of these were polynomial functions, we would have terms to combine, possibly. But here, because the g function is a radical function, there's no way to combine it with the f of x function. But let's do think about the domain. Now, here, x can be anything from negative infinity to positive infinity. But we know that we can't let x equal anything that would cause this expression under the radical to be less than 0. So we need to make sure that 2x minus 1 stays greater than or equal to 0. That means that x needs to be greater than or equal to 1 half. So the domain includes all numbers greater than or equal to 1 half. That would be in interval notation bracket 1 half comma infinity. Now let's look at part b. For f minus g of x, that's f of x minus g of x. So that's just going to be our f function minus our g function. Now thinking about domain, we have the same situation we did on f plus g of x, where we just can't let this expression under the radical become negative, and that's the only thing we have to worry about. Well, since we've already figured that out over here, we'll just go ahead and say that for this f minus g function, the domain is still bracket 1 half to infinity. Here is the rest of example 2. We have the same two functions here. Part C says f times g of x. Well, f is 8x minus 9, and g is this radical function. So really, all we can do in this case is write down the f function times the g function. There's nothing else we can do. If this one were a polynomial function, again, we might multiply these together. But in this case, this is all we can do to it. We can, however, still think about the domain. And we have the same situation that we had on the sum and the difference. This x can be anything. However, this one can only be what allows this 2x minus 1 to be either greater than or equal to 0. We've already solved that, and we already know that in order to keep this number greater than or equal to 0, 
x has to be greater than or equal to 1 half. So for this function, the domain is bracket 1 half to infinity. Now let's look at f divided by g of x. In this case, f is 8x minus 9 and g is the square root of 2x minus 1. So here is f divided by g. We still have the situation where we can't let x be anything that would make this 2x minus 1 expression less than 0, but here we have the added requirement that we can't allow 2x minus 1 to equal 0 either because this expression is in the denominator we can't allow an x value that would cause the denominator to equal 0. So instead of having bracket 1 half to infinity, we'll have to leave out the 1 half itself and we'll just have to have parentheses 1 half to infinity. Now here's example 3 and at first glance it might seem like we're doing something totally different but we're really not. We're still just evaluating combinations of functions. It's just that this time we don't have the expressions for the functions, we have the graph. Let's just remember that for f plus g of 4, what we really need to do is find f of 4 plus g of 4. And we can get that information from the graph. When x equals 4, the f function is 9. And when x equals 4, the g function is 2. So f of 4 plus g of 4 is 9 plus 2, which is 11. All right, now let's look at f minus g of negative 2. When x is negative 2, the f function is negative 3. But when x is negative 2, the g function doesn't exist. You see that the red function is the g function, and when x is negative 2, it's undefined. So what we have here is negative 3 minus something undefined, so that's going to be undefined as well. All right, now let's look at f times g of 1. f times g of 1 is just f of 1 times g of 1. When x equals 1, the f function equals 3. And when x equals 1, the g function equals 1. So what we have here is f of 1 times g of 1 is 3 times 1, which is 3. Okay, for f divided by g of 0, we need to find f of 0 and divide it by g of 0. Well, when x equals 0, the f function equals 1. So f of 0 is 1. But g of 0 is 0. When x equals 0, the g function equals 0. So what we have here is 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. In this part of example 3, we'll do a similar thing, but instead of a graph or an expression, this time we have a table. They've given us just a few x values, and they've given us the function values for f and the function values for g. Okay, so we know that f plus g of 4 is just f of 4 plus g of 4, and f of 4 is 9, and g of 4 is 2, and 9 plus 2 is 11. Okay, for f minus g of negative 2, we know that's equivalent to f of negative 2 minus g of negative 2. f of negative 2 is negative 3, and g of negative 2 is undefined. So negative 3 minus undefined is undefined. For f times g of 1, when x is 1, f is 3. And when x is 1, g is 1. So we have f of 1 times g of 1 is 3 times 1, which is 3. And for f divided by g of 0, we need to find f of 0 divided by g of 0. f of 0 is 1, but g of 0 is 0 and 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Basically, this is the same information that we had in the, in the graph. It's just in a table form, and they wanted us to see that you can evaluate these function combinations lots of different ways. Now here we go, same thing, third verse, uh, but we have this time the expressions. So we've done this now with graph, with table, and now with expression f plus g of 4 is going to be f of 4 plus g of 4. 
To find f of 4, we plug 4 into the f function. And 2 times 4 plus 1 is going to be 9. To find g of 4, we plug 4 into the square root function. And the square root of 4 is going to be 2. Now, f of 4 plus g of 4 is 9 plus 2, which is 11. Okay, on part b, f minus g of negative 2. We would have f of negative 2 minus g of negative 2. f of negative 2 we can find by plugging negative 2 into the f function. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 1 gives us negative 3. g of negative 2 we can find by plugging negative 2 into the square root of x function. And the square root of negative 2 is an imaginary number. As far as our function is concerned, it's undefined. So to subtract negative 3 minus this undefined number gives us an undefined answer. Okay, continuing, it actually should say part C here, f times g of 1 is going to be f of 1 times g of 1. And to find f of 1, we plug 1 into the f function. 2 times 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 1, which is 3. And to find g of 1, we plug 1 into the g function. So the square root of 1 is 1. So now f of 1 times g of 1 is 3 times 1, which is 3. And for part d, this should say d. f divided by g of 0 will be f of 0 over g of 0. And f of 0 can be found by plugging 0 into the f function. That's 2 times 0 plus 1. That's 1. g of 0 can be found by plugging 0 into the g function. That's square root of 0, which is 0. That wouldn't be a problem, except that this is in the denominator of our quotient function. So we have 1 over 0, which is undefined.